Okay, let's get started. Uh, during the meeting, you will see live images or still images of DDRC members and staff. However, images of the, uh, of the applicant and public will not be visible. The public will be able to participate via three methods in this meeting tonight. When participating, please provide your name for documentation purposes. So the public may watch the meeting, may email in any comments, may use the phone number to participate, or may log into the web session. So if you choose to watch, you may stream the meeting through City TV, which may be accessed at www.youtube.com backslash user backslash Columbia SC government. If you're emailing, you can submit, you may submit letters and statements via email to COC board meeting at Columbia SC.gov leading up to and or during the meeting as this account will be monitored during the meeting. Emails or letters will be read into the record. If you choose to phone in, you may call 855-925-2800. When prompted, please enter the meeting code of 9310. Those participating by phone will receive three options on how to participate. Star one will allow you to listen. Star two will allow you to record a voicemail message that will be read into the record. And star three will allow a participant to be placed in a queue so that you may speak live when prompted. If you're um, calling in live via your phone, please make sure your compute, computer audio is muted. Otherwise, we'll, we'll have feedback. And then you may stream the meeting uh, via the web. And that can be found at publicinput.com backslash COC DDRC dash July 2020. So, um, Roll call, Mr. Broom. You're muted. I think you're muted, Mr. Broom. You still muted, Bob? He's here. He's here, Mr. Dinkin. <laughs> here. Miss Fuller. This is Bob. Thank you, Mr. Broom. Miss Fuller Wilt. Here. Ms. Jaco. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. And Mr. Savory. Here. We have quorum. Thank you. And a brief overview of the meeting format. In order to avoid ex parte communications, DDRC members are under strict instructions not to discuss cases under consideration with the public or with each other outside of the public forum. The meeting typically starts with staff calling the case, giving a summary of the project, and then calling on the applicant to present if they wish. Decisions are typically made in one evening. Decisions may be appealed within 30 days to a court of competent jurisdiction. Oaths will be administered individually as we hear either from applicants or from live speakers. Applicants with requests before the DDRC are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes this time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project, case history, and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons presenting information on behalf of the applicant, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the DDRC or staff regarding requests. Members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. Applicants may have five minutes to respond. Staff has a timer and will make presenters aware of when their time has expired. Uh, at this point, are there any changes to the agenda? Um, I don't believe there are any changes to the agenda. Great. Moving on to the consent agenda. The DDRC uses the con consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion and vote. If a member of the DDRC or the general public wants to discuss an item on the consent agenda, 
That item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the meeting. The DDRC then approves the remaining consent agenda items. Will staff please read the consent agenda? Certainly. The first item is 1601 Hampton Street, a request for a recommendation for landmark status in the city center design development district. Um, the second case is 1209 to 1211 Gadsden Street, a request for site plan approval to construct a mixed use development that will contain eight residential units. This is the West Gervais Street Historic Commercial District. Um, we also have 1209 through 1211 Gadsden Street once again as a request for preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill and a certificate of design approval for exterior alterations. 800 Woodrow Street, which is a request for a certificate of design approval for an addition and preliminary certification for the Bailey Bill in the Old Shandon Lower Waverly Protection Area, Area A. And aside from that, we only have the June minutes to review. Excuse me. Is there anyone from the DDRC that would like to remove any item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, is there anyone from the public that would like to have an item removed from the consent agenda? Hi, Mr. Savory. I do have one caller that has indicated that they do wish to speak. However, we may wish to verify that they wish to speak on the consent agenda or an item later on the agenda. Could you, can you verify that? Uh, unfortunately, I would have to patch them through. We'd have to talk to them live. <clears throat> okay. So well, I, 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 will, I will go ahead and patch them through. Thanks. Uh, this is Tom Gottschall. I have nothing to speak on with respect to the consent agenda. Thank you. I'll speak, I'll speak later, but not on the consent agenda. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, Mr. Gottschall, I will um, end your speaking session. So, so do raise your hand when when that item is called. Well, I won't be able to raise my hand, but I'm going to. I'm I'm in queue for uh, the urban design number one. If you'll just right. recognize well, uh, me then. Well, I will have to end this speaking session. So, so do press star three at that time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Savory, Ms. Um, Moore, I do not have any uh, emails with regard to any items for the consent, consent agenda. Very good. Do I have a motion and a second? No. I'll make a motion. motion. Hello? Wait, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me I'm, I'm almost there. Do I have a motion or a second to accept the consent agenda, subject to all conditions containing the case summaries, as well as the, uh, this would be the uh, June meeting minutes. Mr. Dinkins? Yes, motion to approve the consent agenda on the July 9th um, CDRC commission minutes and the June minutes as well. I'm sorry, the consent agenda items and the June minutes. And the June minutes, very good. Uh, is there a second? Second. Do we have a vote? Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Dinkins? Yes. Ms. Fuller-Wilt? Yes. Ms. Jaco? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. And could we have the first case on the regular agenda, please? Okay, can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, the first case on the regular agenda is 1600 to 1620 Gervais Street. This is a case in the city center design development district is a request for certificate of design approval for new construction. The proposal is for an eight story multifamily residential building with below grade parking. The property is located at the southeast corner of Gervais and Pickens within the city center design development district. The project was originally before the commission in January. 
And then at the March 12th hearing, the DDRC approved the site plan for this project and made a motion to defer a decision for certificate of design approval and to appoint a subcommittee to work on, out, on outstanding concerns. A virtual subcommittee was held on June 10th. The evaluation and this presentation will primarily focus on the items discussed in that working session and the changes that were made to address the concerns at the March hearing. And the applicant is going to um, walk through all those changes in detail, so I won't do that, but they have made a number of revisions, some substantial to address the concerns discussed at the March hearing and at the subcommittee in June. And while the design guidelines do make some recommendations about height as well as some about use, these are specifically defined measurable allowances determined by the zoning ordinance. The, the design guidelines are intended to work with the zoning to focus on the qualitative aspects of a project within those defined parameters. Staff finds that the proposal substantially meets the city center design guidelines and recommends approval of the request. And I'm going to turn it over to the applicant to walk through their presentation. Thank you, Lucinda. Um, good afternoon, everyone. For anyone that is new to this particular project review, I'm Linda Irving with Trinitas Ventures, the development manager for the proposed project. We're here with you today for three primary reasons. Uh, the first of which is to briefly highlight the requested and incorporated revisions that uh, were a result of the March 14th DDRC public hearing that we subsequently presented and were approved at the DDRC work session of June 10th. The second, the second reason why we're here today is to present and, and request approval of the two additional requests of, for improvement made by the commission. And uh, those two requests specifically were to reprioritize the use of the brick on the rear of the building to bring it closer to the right of way. And the second item was for us to find, and find a way to incorporate a secondary entrance at the corner of Pickens and Gervais. Uh, and the third reason why we're here today is uh, hopefully to gain uh, final consensus and approval for us to proceed with our project. I'd like to turn it over to Bernard to actually walk you through the exhibits that are relative to each of these items. Um, Bernard, are you ready to go? And I'm sorry, uh, Bernard Vilza is our project architect with HED Design. Thank you, Ms. Riven, I forgot to swear you in, but... Uh... I assume you promise to tell the truth in these proceedings. Thank you. And uh, Bernard, I'd, I'd like to swear you in as well, if you're there. Bernard with us. I am not sure. That's our slide deck up there. Bernard, are you on uh, mute? I don't see him. Can everyone hear me okay? Now we yes. can hear you. Great. Okay. And I need to, Perfect. but I need to swear I need to swear you in quickly. Uh, you Absolutely. promise to tell the truth. You promise to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, your attention uh, today. We would like to go through the slides of uh, that we have prepared um, in response to our uh, last hearing uh, on March uh, 12th and uh, also the revisions that were made based on the uh, DDRC recommendations from the work session on June 10th. This slide, um, we figure we'll go back one slide and just uh, share with you where what we submitted on uh, December 4th on 2019 for a DDRC hearing of uh, January 9th. And uh, these are the recommendations that were made by staff. Um, those were to increase the depth at the elevator and stair base, uh, base increase and treat the window depths at the, at the uh, field conditions of, uh, of the building, pull the brick up to the top floor, extend the brick at, uh, at the top floor and across the base and extend the brick around the corner at the pub, public right away. This next slide shows uh, our response to those comments, uh, which was shared on the uh, January 9th hearing and March 12th hearing. Uh, so just to respond to those. And uh, this slide does represent the additional items that um, the DDRC recommended that we look into uh, on, uh, on March 12th um, for a preparation on a work session on June 10th. Um, so the items were to study animal glazing on Gervais and Pekin Street site, 
to study the corner entry at Pickens and Gervais, increase the brick material on the south facade and the level of detail that goes with it. Uh, and that's what we're going to re review um, into the next slides. So going into the 610 on, on June 10th uh, work session, this is an updated uh, perspective that does show our increase of glazing on Pickens and Gervais street side both uh, right away. Um, and the following slide will show how we achieved that. We achieved by increasing the living room windows from a six by six living room window to a seven by eight living room window and a bedroom window size from a three by six to a four by six bedroom window, which gets us at a 33.2% glazing on Gervais street side from previously 27 and gets us to 38.5% glazing um, on Pickens street side from previously 37. We're going to zoom in into the northwest corner of the building to show the level of detail um, and uh, the, the layers of depth that the facade uh, articulation has. Um, you'll see that wherever we have the condition of the field material, um, which is shown by gray here, we are treating the windows with a frame to add more articulation and interest to the facade and to maintain the required depth on the windows. This is a perspective from Pickens Street and Senate Street that shows the backside. Uh, this is going into the work session on June 10th, where we started about adding more brick to the south facade. Previously, we did have brick just at the corner of Pickens, um, um, on the south facade, right at Pickens by the church. And we added more brick, started adding more brick into the back corner, which related more to the McMaster's building. Again, this is shown uh, on a perspective from Senate Street and Henderson Street. I want to point out that we added the brick at that corner. Um, the next slide shows the south elevation as uh, we worked going into the work session on June 10th. Uh, this is the amount of brick that we added into the corner and uh, the location of it. Again, this is the inner corner uh, right adjacent to the McMaster's building and we added a little bit more brick to work with the program on the southeast corner. We're going to zoom in into the central portion to see the level of detail on the south facade. Um, we want to show that uh, we are treating the back facade with the same level of articulation as we're treating the front facade, um, front meaning north facade Gervais Street side. Uh, this is where we added the brick uh, over McMaster's building and, uh, and uh, the, the same window treatment as we have on the north facade. However, uh, based on the work session on June 10th, uh, the, uh, the DDRC um, commission members that attended did recommend that we further study the entry at Pickens and Gervais, um, the possible second entrance and activity at the corner and to reposition or um, shift the priority locations for brick use on the south facade. So the next slide will discuss those. Um, this is the same perspectives from Pickens Street and Senate Street, um, where we um, shifted the, the brick location added on the south facade per DDRC recommendation. And Tom, thank you for that. Uh, we added it closer to Pickens and um, closer to Pickens right away, so it is more visible and, uh, uh, and attractive to the pedestrians and the people driving by. We're going to shift into perspective of uh, Senate and Henderson Street to show that we did replace the brick from previously on that corner, shifted closer to the Pickens Street side as it was previously shown. So in elevation, you'll see that the brick actually just moved further to the west, uh, closer to Pickens and closer to the public right away. And we are showing that we added uh, close to 30 foot uh, in linear, linear feet of brick closer to uh, Pickens and Gervais and then 10 feet on the on the south, uh, I guess uh, it's southeast corner. We're going to zoom in into the final results of that um, central area that we treated previously. We are maintaining all of our depths. Um, therefore, we're just switching the material from brick to the to the field material and uh, keeping the same level of uh, articulation on the windows as we previously showed. Um, so this is per um, commission recommendation at the DDRC. Now we're going to zoom in at the corner of um, the Pickens Street side. Whoops, one too many. Um, right, so the, the way we wanted to highlight that the brick was added at this corner um, for uh, pending uh, final, final approval on the location. And then this is a new image that was shown going into the work session on June 10th. Uh, this was, uh, many members may not have seen this image or the public, but this was created for the work session. We wanted to 
introduce the idea of how this building will look like at that time, at a different time of the day, and therefore uh, bringing the attention to the uh, ground plane and the storefront articulation as you walk past Gervais Street site um, and uh, the, 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 le the level of sense of security that we're trying to add to the pedestrian experience on the sidewalk. And then we're going to zoom in into that corner. And this is how we treated the corner before we did not have an entry going into the work session. Uh, we were treating the corner, however, the same as our main entry, which is more central to the Gervais Street side, um, to keep the same level of interest and to articulate it the same way as our, as our entryway. Um, with a commission recommendation to uh, to look at the corner again and possibly add activity and a stopping point for our residents um, and a possible of a discrete second entrance at the corner, we looked at that and we updated this image to show just that we uh, removed some usable program space on the second floor to create for a high um, usable space for our, our residents to use as a secondary entrance uh, that is that will be secured and car controlled um, and this is per the commission recommendation um, we believe that this made the project better we want to thank the commission for that and we think that the, the approach to this corner uh, clearly relates to our main entry point now where it has the same level of interest uh, therefore it is being the main entry of the building um, uh, overall uh, the work session was uh, really successful at least from our perspective and it, it, we do believe that you made the project better and with that we want to thank you for your time Linda any closing remarks yeah so information uh, as Bernard mentioned the constructive feedback of the commission was well received and we believe the incorporation of these elements actually was for the betterment of the overall project design we uh, certainly appreciate your collaboration with us and uh, would like to formally request uh, approval of our project as it is presented today based on the feedback that you um, are prepared to give us at this time. Before I move on to uh, any comments from the general public, are there any comments or questions uh, for the applicant from other commission members? I don't hear any unless somebody's muted. No. Nope. Uh, well, thank you for that presentation, and uh, I, I, I generally agree that the comments that were made by commission members seem to have been well incorporated into these uh, revised uh, images, so um, thank you for uh, working with us on that. Uh, hearing no other comments, I'm going to turn this over to uh, comments from members of the general public, and before you start speaking, I will ask you to uh, to swear you in um, and uh, I think that the applicant has the opportunity it's a little different from normal format to uh, respond if staff could remind me are we doing that as sort of aggregating the response or are we going to allow a response per each uh, comment Um, I, I believe that, you know, aggregate might be more efficient, but it is up to you as, as the DDRC as the chair. If, if you find that you okay. need to handle things differently, please do. I, I, why don't we start uh, with if there are any members of the public who would like to speak in favor of the application and if the applicant agrees uh, I think there would be no reason to respond to those. Is the applicant in agreement on that? Linda, you are on mute. Thank you. Yes, we are fine with that. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's first start with uh, any members of the public who are in support of the application. This is in support, please. Hi, Mr. Savory, this is Andrew Livingood. I currently do not have any callers that have indicated they wish to speak, but I would like to take this opportunity uh, to remind anyone on the line that if they wish to speak, they should press star three on their phones, or if they would prefer to leave a voicemail, they can press star two. And if you are calling to speak on this item, but now is the time to do so. Uh, maybe Andrew, I should back up. 
because I'm not sure the way the technology is working. Is it possible for you to be able to tell, to, to call who is uh, speaking in support versus those who are speaking against? Is that, or do we just need to go it, it individual is, by individual? Yeah, it is, uh, you know, regrettably not possible to okay. screen the callers individually. Uh, but at this time, I, I do not have. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so they're in a queue, whether there's, however they however they want to speak, they're in a queue together, right? Is that right? That, that is correct. Okay. So it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to do it that way. So I guess I, I'll, let me, before we get started, let me just ask the applicant, are you uh, willing to uh, wait until after all of the testimony has been made to uh, respond? That, that's perfectly fine. And, okay. and you have, for the record, all the letters of support we've received from the community. I think they're a part of your record already at this point. They so are. we're not overly concerned about whether or not someone was able to dial in and speak at this time. Okay. okay. So I guess with that, let's just uh, get started. And, um, and then the applicant will have an opportunity after, after members of the public have spoken. Uh, Mr. Savory, while we wait for Andrew and anyone who wants to call in, I'll just note that um, uh, this is John Fellows. Uh, we do not have any emails at this time with regard to this item that have not already been forwarded to you. Um, those were forwarded to you by Lucinda in your packets and or after your packet was uh, sent out. But if anyone does want to participate via email instead of uh, via voice, which Andrew's handling, they can send a email message to COC board meeting at columbiasc.gov. Thank you. Okay, we will start to receive comments from the public who choose to speak via phone live by calling 855-925-2801. When prompted, please enter the meeting code 9310, then press star three to join the queue. Please make sure your computer audio is off when calling to avoid feedback. Hi, Mr. Savory, this is Andrew Living Good again. Um, you know, earlier we did have Mr. Tom Gottschall call in. Uh, it, it appears he is still on the line. However, he has not. Um, press star three again on his phone. So I, I do want to give him an extra moment to do that. Very good. Andrew, this is um, Amy here. If Mr. Gottschall is having trouble getting through, uh, do you think it would be advisable for him to perhaps hang up and try calling in again rather than trying it, to- It does it? appear, uh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, it does appear that th that is what he is attempting to do. So okay. it looks like he has left. And um, so I assume he will be calling back in. All right, thank you. Is there anybody else in the queue? Uh, not at this time, no. Mr. Gottschall did send an email in um, a day or so ago, which I think Lucinda forwarded to all of you, uh, which you would have received if, uh, if right. you would like. I can certainly read his email as we wait, or we can uh, wait, give him a few more minutes to uh, call back in. Why don't we give him a few more minutes, see if he's anything that he'd like to say in addition to what he emailed. We also got a staff response to that email.
Okay, uh, he is he's connected, so I will uh, go ahead and patch him through. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Tom Gottschall. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. And let me swear you in first, Mr. Gottschall. You promise Certainly. to tell the truth. You promise to tell the truth in these proceedings. I do. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, again. Uh, I'm Tom Gottschall, and I've spoken uh, before uh, to uh, the DDRC for the University Hill Neighborhood Association and others uh, who are united with us. And I submitted input uh, by email uh, from the University Hill Neighborhood Association, Historic Columbia Foundation, and uh, the University of South Carolina. We uh, do want to reiterate the points and objections we raised before. Uh, we believe the Trinitas project is contrary to the uh, center city guidelines. The building uh, should be uh, fewer stories and not as high. We disagree uh, with the DDRC on one basic issue. Uh, we believe you do have authority to deny the request from Trinitas on the basis that it has too many stories, that it's too high, that there with regard to height, mass, and scale, it's uh, not in context with the adjoining buildings. We've been told uh, by email from DDRC staff uh, that there's a conflict between the uh, DDRC guidelines and zoning. Our view is that uh, DDRC and zoning each have separate realms, uh, separate competencies, and this plan uh, should be disapproved uh, under that authority which you do have as it was initially disapproved uh, because it violates the center city guidelines. Lastly, I assume because she, I believe, has done so in the past that Ashley Johnson is um, not participating in this, recusing herself because her husband has been involved for the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're right. Ms. Johnson is recused on this case. Thank you. Uh, any questions for uh, Mr. Gauchel uh, or from any of the members of DDRC? Would the applicant uh, wish, are there any, is there anybody, so there's nobody else in the queue, is that right? Uh, that is correct. So we're assuming that that's it for uh, members of the public at this point, is that, is that right? I am double checking our comments section. I do not currently see any new comments. Okay. And no, there are no comments. At this point, the applicant is welcome to uh, respond to the uh, previous speaker. I don't see that we have a rebuttal. I, I, I believe the planning department has clarified um, their position and the DERC's purview. So I don't think there's anything that we could add to this. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any follow-up questions, any discussion um, uh, by members of the DDRC with respect to this case before we move to make a motion? And I would, I would just uh, Confirm that we did receive Mr. Gottschall's, uh, Gottschall's email and we received the uh, response from staff. Uh, and this seems to hinge on the, on the notion that uh, DDRC has the ability to request the building be shorter than zoning um, allows. And uh, our reading is that that's not the case, at least mine is, and staff's uh, reading is as well. Um, Hearing no other discussion, and I let me also say that I know we've uh, this applicant's been through, as you demonstrated today, three or four different uh, revisions to the um, four four revisions to the uh, to the project, and I, I do think that each of these revisions has been an improvement, and I, I think that the applicant has expressed that they feel the same way. So, 
Uh, we are limited in our purview, but I think for what we have the ability to address within our peer review, that uh, there have been improvements made to the project that are substantial improvements. Um, so I thank you for, uh, for working with us. Um, I think I'll go ahead and make the motion and then ask for a second and any further discussion before we vote. Um, upon hearing and considering all of the evidence, testimony and documents presented to the DDRC, I move to grant a certificate of design approval for the application for new construction at 1600 Dravet because the applicant meets uh, applicable design guidelines, guidelines. Specifically, it meets the following sections of section 5.3 building mass and organization, uh, which are 5.3.1 building height, in which is stated, quote, the city's comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance are the primary legal vehicles for expressing regulations concerning the height of buildings. Uh, and uh, as staff has pointed out, it actually is within five feet of the uh, gable of the uh, building, the law school uh, across the street. Um, 5.3.3, proportionate openings, 5.3.5, wall articulation. And it meets additionally sections 5.7.1, storefront composition, and 5.7.2, exterior walls, uh, 5.8. Point three windows. So on that basis, I recommend that we approve the certificate of design, uh, uh, grant the certificate of design approval. Is there I'll, a second? I'll, no? I'll second that with all other details deferred to staff. Any further discussion? Hearing none, could we have a vote please? Mr. Broom. Yes. Mr. Dinkins? Yes. Ms. Fuller Wilt? Yes. Ms. Jaco? Yes. Mr. Savory? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Can we have the next case, please? Yeah, Certainly. Not. Thank you. The next case is 1615 Blanding Street. This is a request for a certificate of design approval for new construction of an accessory building. <clears throat> this is, of course, the Hampton Preston Mansion, <clears throat> an individual landmark in the city of Columbia. Um, Historic Columbia um, operates this property for the county, so um, they have hired Lambert Architecture to um, uh, provide drawings for and design for a greenhouse as well as a gatehouse and um, some simple, more sort of temporary structure, a sun, uh, sorry, a shade structure. So the greenhouse is intended to go in the, um, I wanna say it's the Northwest quadrant of the site where my understanding is there were greenhouses originally. The, the Hampton Preston Mansion had quite extensive and um, well-known grounds in its heyday. And so the greenhouse, uh, as a supporting structure is certainly not a, a new concept to the property. So Josh Bucher with um, Lambert Architecture is, is here actually to talk about the project um, and the design and how they came to their decisions. Um, staff is recommending approval for this with a few conditions that um, stucco be used for siding for the Greenhouse Foundation and Service Building and since this is so close to the edge of the property, which is in the landmark district itself, um, and it's uh, right up against, I believe it's Laurel Street, we're recommending an evergreen hedge be planted that comes to about eight feet high at least, um, just across the back wall um, to shield the public view of sort of the more utilitarian part of the greenhouse from, from public view. Um, and that, um, we review the plans for the removal of the wall where the gatehouse will go. Um, it's gonna be cut into the wall there um, and it's reconstruction. So staff is happy to review those um, and all other details be deferred to staff. So I will turn this over to Mr. Booker if he is ready to speak. Yeah, hi. Um, Tom, do I need to be sworn in first? Yes, please. Uh, do you promise to tell the truth in these proceedings? Yes, absolutely. Um, Thanks for okay. checking. Uh, well, well, good <laughs> afternoon. 
Uh, again, my name is uh, Josh Booker, and I'm the project architect uh, with Lambert Architecture and Construction Services. Um, and uh, thank you all for your time this afternoon. Um, we're very excited to be working with the Boyd Foundation and Historic Columbia, as well as with the city, on continuing the story out here at the Hampton Preston Mansion and Gardens. Um, Historic Columbia has done extensive research out here to help guide and, and inform our design. And I believe we have a few of them on the line as well, if we have any uh, historic questions that I can't directly answer. Um, but I, I just wanted to kind of give a quick uh, overview of each one of these components and um, we'll, we'll go from there. So um, as Historic Columbia has, uh, has researched this, um, they have found some, some texts that indicated that the original greenhouse was a, a three quarter greenhouse um, and attached to the north wall, north site wall of the property. Um, the uh, the design intent was actually to interpret that idea of a, a greenhouse along a garden wall and uh, by representing the the wall in uh, for parentheses, if you will, as um, as all of the support spaces to the greenhouse. So the storage and planting room and restrooms, et cetera, are along the, the back edge of that and create the the wall, if you will. Um, the structure of the greenhouse itself is based on the uh, tripartite facade of the mansion, um, as well as the column spacing of the front veranda. And additionally, a, a line of semi-elliptical arches uh, is integrated into the structure to kind of further mimic the details on the house. The greenhouse itself is intended to serve uh, many roles here, uh, both as a production greenhouse slash uh, support area for the gardens, as well as an interpretive space to um, help tell the story of the development of the property. Um, moving to the, the gatehouse real quick, uh, that's a, another fun addition to this property. And luckily this was a little better documented over the years. Uh, we had a few photographs and a, a Sanborn map to help uh, help guide us from that, uh, that design. So we were better able to re recreate that structure as it likely would have existed uh, when it was originally constructed. Um, the major difference here is, is the material. Uh, historically, it was likely a heavy timber wood structure with a slate roof. Um, however, we're proposing a, a metal structure, both for durability and to be consistent with the existing gazebo in the uh, children's garden. Um, as Amy mentioned, there is a, another portion of this, and that's a, a shade structure on the northeast corner of the garden. Um, and this is located in an area that was historically documented as an old orchard. Uh, and again, this is further support for the gardens. Um, one half will be a shade structure, which is uh, literally just a, a metal column with a, a shade fabric uh, draped across the area. And the other half is a, an unshaded planting area. Um, and both, both of these combine to roughly the same size, uh, same area and proportion of the, the greenhouse footprint. Um, the intent being that they're kind of mirrored on the site. Um, this portion will be secured by a metal fence that's uh, to match the existing fence on the property and uh, a tall hedge as well to help screen that. And uh, I think we're in agreement with uh, Amy's comments as well about the continuing that hedge along the, the back of the greenhouse property that helps soften that. Um, and then the final piece of this is just uh, some new gardens in front of the greenhouse. Um, and that design is loosely based on some sketches of the grounds that we had from the 40s um, while trying to incorporate the uh, existing trees that are into that design. Um, so with that, uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and like I said, I think we have a, a few people from the store at Columbia too, if uh, there's any other questions that might be better directed at them. Very good. Uh, are there any questions or comments from members of the commission? Josh, I heard you say one thing I've never heard the phrase before. What's the three quarter greenhouse? Um, I, I believe, and, and maybe John can help me with this, but uh, it's essentially a, a lean to greenhouse um, against a, a, an existing wall or a, a new wall, but uh, it doesn't completely come back down on the other side it, it leans against it um okay that's what i was uh, maybe assuming because the first thing that i looked at as i went through this all of a sudden i said hey it's asymmetrical but i guess that's the that's the uh, that's very deliberate uh, from what you're saying it sounds like yep yeah, Tom, okay. from what no, i understand no, I'll, 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 uh, this is john share uh, we'll tell the john truth tell the, okay, i will thank you. Yes. 
And um, I'll ask Keith Mearns, our director of grounds, to back me up on this. But from what I understand, most of the three-quarter style greenhouses had their um, rear wall, the north wall, uh, bricked in um, because the other spaces um, obviously were um, allowed for greater amount of light to get in. And that uh, wall would have been used for kind of radiation of heat. Is that correct, mm -hmm. Keith? Thermal lag. Yeah, that's the, uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I promise to tell the truth. Um, yes, that's correct, John. I love this self swearing in. Very good. Thank you. Any other, any other comments, questions for the applicant? Um, I have a question about the stack up. Can you hear me? Yes. I have a question about the stucco wall. It's waist high and the rest of it is all greenhouse. What is the construction of that wall? Is it concrete block with a uh, scratch coat of stucco or is it ephus? So, yeah, that's going to be a, a CMU block wall uh, with a scratch coat on top of it. Okay. Thank you very much. Good question. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there, are there any members of the public who wish to speak about the application? We encourage those that would like to communicate via email to begin sending in letters and emails. Emails to COC board meeting at columbiasc.gov. We also encourage those wanting to leave a voicemail to call 855-925-2801. When prompted, please enter the meeting code 9310, then press star 2 to begin leaving the voicemail. We'll start to receive comments from the public who choose to speak via phone live by calling 855-925-2801. When prompted, please enter the meeting code 9310, then press star 3 to join the queue. Please make sure your computer audio is off when calling to avoid feedback. Well, now, uh, I think we'll, I assume we don't have anybody yet. We'll now hear comments to receive in writing, receive in writing via email or letter. Please communicate by sending an email to COC board meeting at columbiasc.gov. Uh, at this time, is are there any letters or emails um, to read them. There are no uh, emails or letters to read at this time. Very good. And I think we'll pause for a moment to see if anybody's calling in. And Mr. Savory, this is Andrew Living Good. I currently do not have any callers on the line that have indicated they wish to speak. Okay. I think we will uh, move on at this time. Okay. In that case, uh, would any member of the commission <laughs> like to? Um, well, ask, let me ask first if, if any commissioner would like to make a general comment before I ask for a motion. Hearing none, uh, could I have a motion, please? I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, I will move to grant a certificate of design approval for new construction of an accessory structure located at 1615, I mean, located at 1615 Blanding Street based upon the application being in general conformance with section 17 6 D of the City of Columbia Ordinance. <clears throat> Approval is based upon the following conditions. That the stucco be the siding material for the greenhouse foundation and service building. An evergreen hedge to reach at least eight feet tall is to be pointed across the back wall of the property to shield public views of the back of the greenhouse. This shall be replicated along the northeast side of the back wall as well for continuity staff shall review and approve plans for the removal of the wall for the gatehouse and its reconstruction and all other details deferred to staff. May I have a second? 
I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, staff, can we have a vote, please? Certainly, Mr. Broom? Yes. Mr. Dinkins? Yes. Ms. Fuller Wilt? Yes. Ms. Jaco? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. And Mr. Savory? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Do we have any further business? Oh, we do not. May I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.